in my other video, you've been stick bugged. LOL. Don't you hate it when this happens right in front of your face so bad that you want to kill it with fire? Well, I have just this kind of short tutorial on how to make a rather tunish stylized fire from scratch so you can burn this insect into a mess of ashes. Also, according to my channel stats, a pretty small percentage of people who watch my totally professional videos are subscribed. <laughs> what am I doing? But if everybody else here wants to subscribe, feel free to do so. You don't have to, of course, if you don't want to. Anyway, let's play with some flames, shall we? Assuming you already know your keybinds and some basic modeling and shading. First, you gotta do is add a shape, a cylinder shape. Make sure you don't have any caps so the fire doesn't look unnatural. Also, that we have to make the UVs look like this beauty. Copy the settings along if you like. Press tab to enter edit mode. Select all and move it so it's sitting on the grid. Add a few edge loops if necessary. Coolio. Base, done. Next, the modifiers. Two of them, really. First, subdivision surface. Adjust the amount of subdivisions if you so desire, while also not obliterate your computer RAM. Next, the displacement modifier. This is where the real stuff happens. Add a new generated texture and set it to a grayscale clouds. Play around and adjust here and there until you get close to this result. Or copy. Use proportional editing with O and scale the top and down. All I did here is press S and then use Shift Z for XY scaling so the other edge loops doesn't go anywhere on the Z axis. You don't have to, but this is what I'm going for. Next thing you do is add in an empty to act as the controller, or rather driver for the fire motion. Set coordinates to objects from the modifier to the empty. So far, your mesh should be dancing like an inflatable tube man you see at car dealerships as you move your empty straight up. Before you move on to material shading, now will be a good time to toggle on bloom from this little monitor tab. Fire is bright. Like a light. And like a light, it just simply glows. That's it. Nothing more. Anyway, we move on to shading. I'll go over each of the nodes as we go through them if I can. First to add is the layer weight input. The idea is the color will change based on whether the polygons face towards you. Color ramp converter. This is for modifying the colors and their blending. In this case, we really need the blending to constant. And I just set three colors, which aren't really colors though. They're just black, gray, and white. Once again, copy if you need to. Hue and saturation color. To use color, really. Make sure the color ramp connects to the value socket. Now experiment with the factor and the color to see what best suits your preference. Emission shader. To brighten the mood. Simple as that. If you're still with me on this, we're halfway down the shading part. Add in a texture coordinate input and the mapping vector. One has the UV based axis data and the other has control over them. Noise texture. This will be the source of the flames. Separate XYZ converter. This node will be the reason the flames gradually disappears as it flows upward. Specifically the Y socket. Math converter. Connect the Y from the separator less than the textures factor. Adjust the mapping and the noise to better fit the scale with the geometry. Test the Y slider from the mapping node just to see how fiery it looks. And if you feel satisfied with your thing, you're on to the next step. You might want to set your material options to anything other than opaque. Also, preferably no shadows. The last of the nodes are going to be transparent and mixed shaders. Math node to factor, transparent to top socket, and emission to bottom socket. Alrighty, next is to make the material follow along with a single driver. Remember the empty we just added in? We'll be using that. Right click on the mapping node's wide translation and drive. The expression should look something like this. The sign on the numerator is the direction and the denominator is the speed. If you know your mathematics, then maybe you are more than likely to understand what the expression is supposed to do. Target object is the same empty from before, Z axis location, and global space. After all that, you can exit the mini menu, move the empty vertically, and watch the magic. There is one thing you should note when creating drivers though. If you drag in a new layout area and change it to the driver's editor, you should see a graph. If you don't, just make sure the mapping node is selected. The graph should always look like a graph of y equals x or just a diagonal line. That way the driven object will always stay consistent following its target. It also makes it easier to keep track of. With all that being said, the fire is basically done. There are a few extra options you could do more with this creation though, like the brightness. You can use the strength from the emission shader to see more glow, and that is the purpose of the bloom checkbox if you recall. Changing to different colors. I think it's more common that the color wrap is used to display color on meshes because they have more control over them. In my case however, I just like a simple color change from the hue sliders from the hue and saturation node. Another thing you can do involves adding a few more math nodes for the purpose of controlling the wideness of the fading flow. By the way, although I don't expect it from you, it is recommended if you understand the process through not only these nodes, but all the others if it were you working with them yourself. Anyway, adding three math nodes, 
Set both subtracting by 0.5 and follow placements on screen. Set the last one divided by 2, 3 or whatever you want and place. Now the dividing number is the fading spread control. Finally, how about setting the fire to play by time? All you have to do is firstly select the very empty, click on its z-axis transformation, and type in an expression. In the case of that expression, it will auto-create a driver that plays when you press whatever key map you use to play an animation. Remember though to check the driver graph for a diagonal line. Man, that was interesting, wasn't it? A couple of things. This tutorial, as you may already notice, isn't meant to be followed easily without pausing, but hopefully has enough info for creating something from start to finish like this one. Also, I want to say, my other video was said to be very helpful and got some pretty significant and interesting numbers on it. That is a ton more than what I was expecting, so I am glad this video was helpful. I am gonna take my leave because I am running out of things to say, so stay safe and wear masks. I might put up a gaming video or two next time, but we'll see. Subscriptions and likes are appreciated, and you dudes have a good morning, evening, night, or whenever you are.